to most onlookers, this landing looks normal, and they would be correct. But when we get to the end of this video here, you'll notice 13 characters, and these 13 characters have a long story behind them. Just like the iconic 747, the 737 MAX was supposed to join the Boeing Legacy as another revolutionary aircraft. But there was an issue. Quite early in the morning, my husband repaired his flight and we had a meal. That was the normal routine before he left for his flight. After a few hours, I got a call from one of his colleagues. We are not able to find his aircraft. A Lion Air Boeing 737 crashed into the sea this morning. Rescuers have located debris, but they do not expect to find any survivors. An Ethiopian Airlines flight has crashed shortly after takeoff from Addis Ababa, killing all 157 passengers and crew thought to be on board. Boeing's best-selling plane is coming under increased scrutiny after another deadly accident. I would walk before I was to get on a 737 MAX. I would walk. The cause of these crashes? MCAS. MCAS, or Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, was a system designed to help the nose pitch down in an event of a stall. The MCAS received faulty data from the angle of attack sensors, which caused the plane to keep pitching up and pitching down very rapidly, and eventually pushed the nose of the aircraft down, which ultimately caused the crash. Before we get more in depth into the MCAS system, let's talk about how this plane actually flies. The aerodynamics of a plane look like this. The aerodynamic characteristics of almost all flying objects looks fairly similar. They each have a wing that has a trailing edge and a leading edge. As the wing moves through the air, the air goes over the leading edge off the trailing edge. The aerofoil or wing has lower pressure on the top and higher pressure on the bottom. This causes the aircraft to experience lift. Lift is a force, and also is a vector quantity. This means that it has both a magnitude and a direction associated with it. To figure out the force of lift on an object, or specifically a plane, you need to have four different variables. These variables are the coefficient, the density, the velocity squared, and the wing area. The coefficient, which is CL, contains a lot of the complex dependencies, such as the shape of the aircraft, the viscosity and compressibility of the air, the density of the air, and the inclination. Now that you know how a plane flies, let's dive deeper into the Boeing 737 MAX. I want you to spot out one big difference here, the engines. The engine on the 737 MAX is significantly larger than the engine on its previous model. Notice a similarity though, the airframe. The airframe slash fuselage is the exact same model. There are a couple tweaks here and there, but those airframes are pretty much identical. Except one of them has engines on them that's 22% bigger than the previous model, and that airframe's exactly the same, meaning that same airframe has to keep up a heavier and bigger engine. The airframe also has to keep up with another plane from another company. But why is this? You see, Airbus is Boeing's largest competitor, and due to their company's innovative model, they've taken over Boeing's place as the number one aircraft manufacturer. Airbus is now the leader, and Boeing has to catch up, which means they want bigger engines in their planes as well. Though, Boeing didn't have enough time or money to make a whole revamp of the plane. So they took their older model, their older fuselage, put two new engines on there, and called it a new plane. But Boeing had a problem with doing that. Their plane is lower than Airbus literally lower, not just in production sales, but the actual height of the aircraft off the ground. You see, because of these bigger engines, Boeing had a tough time converting them and putting them onto their old aircraft. So their solution? Stick the engines more higher and forward onto the wing to give the plane enough ground clearance without having to redesign the landing gear. By doing this, Boeing caused themselves to head run into another issue. This issue was that because the engines were mounted so forward and upward on the wings, it created additional lift, which caused the need of the MCAS system. The MCAS was designed to automatically adjust the nose of the aircraft down 
to counteract the pitching up caused with the new engine placement. MCAS was designed to automatically turn on and off and essentially help the pilots. But is something helpful if you can't make it go away? See, the thing is, with the MCAS system, it was never disclosed in the pilot manual. There wasn't training for it, there wasn't anything about it. Only a certain set of characters. M-C-A-S. At the very back of the pilot manual, which was under the abbreviation section. Let's say that me and you are plane crash investigators. Now, a lot goes into a plane crash, and there's many factors that entail that some are going to be very hard to calculate. So we're going to try to isolate down our calculations and make it easier for us to solve them. The first step we need to take for solving a question is what we're being asked. Let's say our angle of attack sensor falls off, which activates MCAS, which caused our plane to crash. Let's say the angle of attack sensor lands at the same place as our plane crash. We need to figure out the distance between the angle of attack sensor falling off and the crash site. We also need to figure out the angle at which the angle of attack sensor fell off on, or the theta. Let's say our angle of attack sensor falls off when our plane is flying horizontal and level. This means we have initial velocity in the x direction, not the y direction, which means our initial velocity in the y direction is equal to zero. First, we need to figure out the time. We know our final y is going to be zero because it's going to land on the ground. Our starting y is 8,534 meters, which is roughly 28,000 feet. I converted it to meters because in physics we use meters per second and it all revolves around meters. We can rearrange our equation and bring the 4.9 to the other side to make it positive. And then we will divide by 4.9 to find our time. Time is equivalent to the square root of our uh, height over our gravity. So what we can do is we can take that and find the square root of it to find our time. In this specific example, the time is equal to 41.7 seconds. We can use this to help find our distance in the x direction from where the angle of attack sensor breaks off to where it lands back at our crash site. To do this, we use our equation d equals vt. To do this, I bring in my velocity of our aircraft, which is 200 meters per second, and our time, which is 41.7. We can uh, times these together and multiply them to make it 8,340 meters to get our direction in the X. We can now get our theta, which is 45.66 degrees because we take our inverse tan and we do our opposite over adjacent. We have now completed our first task as a plane crash investigator. Good job. We'll move on to our next statement. Say we're trying to figure out where the plane was before it crashed. We can use physics to help us. This question, we have a plane with an airspeed of 650 kilometers an hour at a direction. There is also some tailwind, which is allowing the aircraft to move at a faster rate. We have to find the resultant vector relative to the ground, what the ground speed of the plane is, and what the direction of the plane is. We first need to create a diagram. This diagram will help us plan out our vector and make it easier for us to know what's going on. After you drew your vector and found angles that were easy to find, you can now choose to find the other side, which is our unknown, which is our resultant vector. To do this, we need to use c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. This will give us the missing side. Our resultant vector or missing side is also known as our ground speed. Next, we have to find the angle that our plane is flying at. To do this, we can use sine law. This will allow us to find the angle that our plane is flying at and figure out the direction that our plane is going. Once you've figured out the angle, what you have to do next is a little bit trickier. Because the angle we found is floating in the middle of our diagram, we have to add it on to the other angle that we had originally, which was 35 degrees. 35 degrees plus 5.21 degrees equals 40.21 degrees and the direction would be north 40.21 degrees east. Concluding it all off, MCAS was just another band-aid fix for the 737 MAX, a scheme created by Boeing to cover up their mistakes on a race they knew they couldn't win. As Boeing was one of the leaders in the industry, they thought they could get away with this scheme just because of their reputation and their pretty face. But time was soon to tell, and two crashes happened in the span of four months. 
the FAA ground the 737 MAX for almost two years, orders were canceled, and they had to pay over $2.5 billion after being charged with fraud. To conclude this video, I want to tell you what you learned from it. From watching this video today, you learned the aerodynamics of a plane, the formula for lift and how lift works, how to solve specific kinematic equations, how MCAS works, why it was incorporated, and how MCAS was created as part of an elaborate scandal. On January 7, 2021, Boeing settled to pay $2.5 billion after being charged with fraud from hiding the information of MCAS. They also had to pay $2.5 million in criminal penalties, $1.7 billion of damages to airline customers, and half a million dollars to the crash victims and their families. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Feel free to subscribe using the button down below and leave a like. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.